You bet. Well, Matthew, it's nice to see you. I've always talked with you uh, in Los Angeles or New York or someplace. It's nice to be able to welcome you to my home, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Oh, yeah. So uh, here you are now uh, out promoting Biloxi Blues. As a matter of fact, the last time we talked uh, for Project X, we kind of touched upon the fact that you were doing Biloxi Blues. And uh, uh, even though it's been a long time since I have seen it on stage, I was aware that the script is different mm -hmm. for the movie. Now, why did Neil Simon, since he did both the screenplay and the, the uh, stage play, why did he feel it necessary to make these changes? Well, some changes he had to make in order to uh, make it a film. Uh, it had to be shortened and it had to be uh, things that were outside and stuff like that were a little better because it was nice, nicer things to film. Uh, also, Mike Nichols directed the film version and he didn't direct the stage version, so a new director makes a different uh, view of things. He worked with Neil uh, on the rewrites. He would suggest things to Neil that Neil would, they, they got along very well that way, and Neil would always do the writing, but often it was suggested by Mike. Are there any different characters? <coughs> um, well, there are a couple of extra guys. Um, there's two, two more guys, but they have very little parts. It's basically the same characters exactly. Uh, there's just two little parts added because it's a whole barracks this time rather than just six guys or whatever it was. Um, there's a huge barracks f filled with men, so there are more little parts in it than there were in the play. Is a lot of the dialogue exactly the same, Matthew? Yeah, a lot of it is. Uh, a lot of it is just edited, it's just shortened. Um, and then there are some new things written in too. I think some, some really good new things, actually. I, I, I enjoyed the uh, film, and the differences made it easier for me in a way, because I didn't want it to be like repeating a stage performance. So anything that was new was kind of a, a challenge and, and nice for me. What would be one or two new things? Uh, they were so nice, I don't even remember them. Uh, well, there's a, there's a scene at the end with me and Sergeant Toomey, which uh, isn't in the play. Uh, there's, in the scene with uh, Daisy Hannigan and me, uh, there's a lot of dancing that's not in the play. There are a lot of times when, when we could take more time and not always be talking like in the play. There are a lot of things that are just visual or just, uh, just moments, just reactions that are, I think, very nice. That dancing scene, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, that was a favorite scene of mine in the mm. film. I think that's a just lovely scene. Yeah, really. Thank you. Did you, um, were you familiar with that uh, era of music? Yes, I was. Uh, my father was a big fan of that kind of music, uh, and I remember when I was in high school, I kind of stumbled on his record collection and started playing it a lot, so I, I knew that music pretty well. I knew all the music that's in the film before, it was, before I saw the film. Do you feel that your character is any different in the film version as opposed to the stage version? Or do you think he's essentially the same person? Well, he's probably essentially the same person. I think he's a little more, uh, I, I, th I think he's different. It's hard to say how, but he's, he's a little more fully explored, I think, in the film. Uh, in the stage version, a lot of it was talking to the audience, so he's more of a narrator. And in the uh, film, most of that was taken out. There's some voiceover, but very little. And. Uh, they took stuff from the stuff that used to be talking to the audience and put it into the scenes. So he's more involved in the action and with the other actors than maybe a little bit than in the play. So that's a difference. Did you ever ask Neil how autobiographical this is? No, I never have. Uh, but some, some of it he mentioned you know, had really happened to him, some of it hadn't really happened to him. Do you think that he kept a daily journal? I don't know. I never asked him. Never asked him? Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to, to choose one or the other, Matthew, the stage version over the movie, which do you think you would take? 
I don't know. I, I could never see. I never have seen the play. Uh, I was in it, but I never saw it after I was out of it. So it's a little hard to, to get. You know, the only one I've seen really is the film. Uh, for me, I sort of like the film better, but that's just that may be completely wrong. But I, I sort of like the film. I do too. Yeah, I, I, I really it. do. Oh, uh, there, well, there's just something about the way a film can open a story up. I, I felt yeah. I, I got more from the Oh, that's because sometimes film. it's bad when a play is made into a movie, you lose a lot. But I don't think that happened this time. I hope not. I don't know. Because I, as I say, I haven't really seen the play. The, uh, the language is a little less raucous, isn't it, in, in, the, the, in, the, in the movie? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Well, there was two versions of the play, actually. It was... It was uh, more ruckus, and then it, and then it was less later. He cut a lot of swearing out, changed it. it was nice when he when he cut it out in a way because he, he was forced to think of uh, of strange cuss words, you know, that, <laughs> that aren't really bad to say, but that are pretty amusing. <laughs> One of the the fun scenes in the film is um, where you have the guys around you in the barracks, and and you play this game. If you had one week to live, right. If you had one week to live, Matthew, what would you, how would you spend it? Well, I don't know. I really would hate that if I only had one week to live. I don't know. I'd go to the priest or the psychiatrist and try to deal with it. Uh, I think I would steal from, from one of the characters in the, in the movie and say, I'd like it to be with my family, which is uh, maybe not that exciting, but I think that's really what I would like. That's a great scene. Yeah, yeah that, that scene plays very well. Um, what is the next thing on your agenda now? Uh, I'm open right now. I don't know. Are you looking at some things? <clears throat> yeah, looking at films and plays. I don't know, know what I'm going to do yet. What, uh, if you could kind of mold a project for yourself, what kind of thing would you like to do? Um, I don't know. It, you know, it's hard to say until, until I see it. I don't want to limit, limit anything, so I kind of read everything. But uh, I would probably want to do something uh, romantic or um, a little serious, maybe. And you wouldn't care whether it was stage or film? No, not really. Yeah. Uh, things now uh, between you and Neil Simon, are they all kind of patched up after your differences? Yeah, we're very, very friendly now. Was that, uh, <clears throat> was that a misunderstanding or just uh, agents quarreling or what was that all about? I don't know what it was about. It's, he's, uh, we're both pretty passionate sometimes. You know, when you care about your, uh, what you do for a living, uh, and the other person does also. Sometimes uh, you get into conflict. Because we're both very, you know, serious about some things. But I look back now, it seems kind of ridiculous. Really? If you were doing it over again, you would handle it differently? Probably not, but it, it still would be <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> well, at least you're honest about it, Matthew. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, but everything is really great now, huh? Oh, yeah, we're, we're friends. And you would do another play of his if he... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, Matthew, thanks for coming to Dallas, and it's wonderful to see you and to see you looking well, and, uh, and uh, I just <clears throat> hope the film does real good for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you.